Hello, good afternoon from the city of Dallas. It's a beautiful afternoon. It is my pleasure to be hosting you again at the Naked and Afraid show. And today's conversation is very hot. Very, very, very hot. Today we will be talking about... Hmm, let me bring it off the screen. Something really hot and steamy and spicy. So please tell your friends it's that time of the week where we got to say what we got to say. So... How to satisfy a woman in bed on her mind, her body, and her soul. How to satisfy a woman in bed to own her mind, her body, and soul. You know, sometimes men think that it is about the quantity and the gymnastics and the aggression. And women are saying it is about quality being tossed in the places they haven't been tossed before. Amen, somebody. You know, so... We need to have that, you know, conversation today. How to satisfy a woman, a woman, you know, people born and raised and bred, whatever English, women in bed, how to own her mind, how to own her soul and how to own her body. Men, it is time to jot so please bring out your writing pad i don't want to hear ed if you know i know how to hit it my pulling game is this my pulling game is that some of you the way you people touch people's breasts is like pure water people just be squeezing ah, ah! you people will be touching people's breasts like pure water and be squeezing it like oranges if that's how they used to squeeze it would you have met anything Would you have met anything? People will be squeezing people's... Somebody's child, though. Somebody's child, you'll be squeezing their breasts. you just be ah, ah! That is what we want to talk about today. All those bad habits, bad behavior. All those ones that you just think that once you do ta-ta-ta-ta-ta 15 times, that's the end. And then you'll be counting scores. So... We are not discussing quantity today because some of you are just, some of you even need to start your sexual life from nursery one. Do you understand? Like, there is a way to touch a woman. Don't be touching us like you are touching um, Johnson, um, or, or, or Steve, all those men. Don't touch us like men. Some of you will just come with aggression to the bed. My friend, you are not a baboon, you are not a lion. So we need to have that conversation today because all this bad behavior, we're not going to get it into me. How to satisfy a woman in bed. How to own her mind, own her body and own her soul. Amen, somebody. God is in the bedroom too. Some of you will say you are very spiritual, you know, but there are some things you don't know how to do. The only PhD you have is PhD missionary. Anything else like that, you don't know how to do it. Ah, ah, men of God. So, women, let's talk. The men are here to learn. You know, the men are here to learn. And I'm glad that they have come in today to say they want to learn. You know, so enough of touching women like you are touching them with anger, with aggression. You know, you'll be touching some people. Ah, ah. In fact, there are some touches that when you touch people, self, you deserve to be flogged. All right, more cuts. You deserve to be flogged. Like you deserve to be flogged. Like, in fact, you deserve to be warned after touching some women. Don't be touching people's breasts like puff puff. <laughs> Come, let me even leave you today. Women, please talk to me. How do you want to be satisfied in bed? Please comment. Let's talk. Some men deserve to be back in nursery. Some of you don't even have a game. People have to be faking orgasm when they are with you. Yes, I will save the video, Lady Arike. I trust you, the owner of Bridgerton. Anywhere. Orgasm is you will see Harry Ikedi. <laughs> Thank God she's not close to where I can't be flogged <laughs> with a rhyme or cord. <laughs> Women, let's talk. 
men come and learn oh, how to touch people's but women's bodies. You people can touch yourselves anyhow. No concern us. Don't touch us the way you touch men. Don't touch us the way you touch men. We are not men. Every part of our body is very sensitive. Every part of our body is very sensitive. Do you understand? So women, let's talk. How do you want to be satisfied? How do you want to be satisfied in bed? Married women, um, ex-convict, <laughs> ex-sexual convict. You know, some of you, you know those people now, you have repented. Yes, those are the ex-sexual convicts <laughs> and married women. Men, I'm not asking you how you want to be touched to any how they touch you people now. Nah, nah, no. But there's a way you touch women, there's a way you touch women's bodies. Women's bodies are to be nurtured. Pay attention. Don't just enter um the bedroom like thunder and lightning and then quickly be removing your girl. Ah, ah, take it easy, young man. And then in three minutes, in four minutes, some of you they can't even cuddle you. The woman they cuddle you like this, it's like you've been oppressed. Just be chasing them up and down. It is not a woman's fault that the, you haven't nurtured other parts of your, what's it called? It is not, um, yeah, it is not a woman's fault that men think that the only way to connect is through sex. And because society has made it look like that, they feel like, or oh, once they cuddle or they kiss or touch and all of that, there must be evacuation and ejaculation. And the truth is, some people know that cuddling and other things are nurturers, you know, and we need to like nurture them. You should they should be able to cuddle you for 10, 15 minutes without feeling harassed. Yes, you can have an erection. But it should not be that every time they cuddle you, you have an expectation. So, Professor Professor Lady Arike, all the way from Canada, has started talking and I'm going to read her comments. It's a shame that when women speak up about sex or lack of it, it's usually perceived the wrong way. Regardless, we must continue this conversation. We must continue it. Any, any how they want to feel, they should please feel it. Women, men are here to learn how you want to be touched. Please speak to me. How do you want women to touch you? Um, men to touch you? How do you want to be touched? Don't come and send me DM after this conversation to say, Easy, I could not see anything. Da -da 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 -da. Don't fake orgasm. If they are not hitting the right spot, let us help you tell them how to hit the right spot. Do you understand? There's no reason faking orgasm. You are just here once on earth. If you have to fake it, then something is not right too. good they also said that men should ask questions okay so men please type your questions here and then women will respond because there are some women who are professors in this thing lady arike is here she's one of my panel of judges you know on standby if you even want me to bring her in i can ask her that arike do you want to join this conversation because arike has a phd in a lot of things and this one is one of it and i like to um give honor to whom honor is due so men please ask questions it is not about quantity it's not about quantity of sex it's about the quality of sex yes and they also said that you should please ask your partners how do you like it and then when you ask them please don't be defensive because when you ask a woman how do you like it and then she's not trying to tell you now start fighting that eh, is because you're comparing me with all your exes it's because of this is because of that no you cannot ask a question and not be ready for the answer so please when you are asking a woman how do you like it be available to receive the answer let her tell you that, okay, please touch me like this. Please do this one. Spend more time here. Do this one. Do that one. And then let your ego be somewhere. Please ask her. Don't judge her. 
don't call her a prostitute or think that oh she's spoiled you are not having leftovers or come up with names or think it's because of her exes she's trying to make you you know be like one of your her exes all of those things no ask your woman how do you like it we must have these conversations because god is in the bedroom too you can't just be doing missionary up and down how will you do missionary for 50 years when there are other good things to do that during sex if you'll be doing thanksgiving thank you after sex you will do thanksgiving you'll even be looking for food to give them they ah well done good and faithful servants ah ah you finish work those are the conversations you need to be having do you know what it is to evacuate you'll be very productive at work your brain will be just jamming do you understand you will show up at work the conqueror the emperor the lion is here that's good sex so let's have this conversation now men please drop your questions women please drop your questions because i'm just here as a middleman and a servant and a servant of the most high to ensure that you make God proud in the bedroom. God created sex. A gentleman says, how do I turn a woman on? How do I turn a woman on? Bam. They have started. Make God proud. People think that it's only heaven that is the goal. Orgasm is one of the goals. There's no orgasm in heaven. There's no ejaculation in heaven. Do you understand? So before you think that, eh, if I fail on it, I will go and do it in heaven. No make god proud ah, ah. somebody said how do i turn a woman on who wants to first of all respond though, before i respond women they said how can they switch on your ignition how can they start you how can i turn a woman on men are asking questions now they want to learn women come and give them answer Come and give them the answer. For the men who want to know how to turn a woman on, having sex with a woman starts at the break of dawn. So if you plan to have sex at night, eh, don't wait till 30 minutes to the sex. And then you are now chasing up and down like a rabbit or a rat. It ain't gonna happen. Do you understand? So it starts from the it starts in the morning. So from the moment she wakes up, you know, and then we all have love languages. By now, you should know a woman's love language. And then the women have different love languages. So you should study your spouse. Study your spouse. There are some that words turn them on. So you're appreciating them, telling them how beautiful they look, how they smell, how intelligent they are. You should know what the woman wants. So know your woman first. Every woman is different. So know your woman first. Appreciate her. Give her all of the beautiful words. And uh, there are some that it is gifts that work for them. So no matter how tiny the gift is, it's just the thoughtfulness. It may be a card. It may be a love letter. Whatever it is. There are some it is acts of service. There are some it is quality time. You know, so you need to first of all know who your woman is. Because women are totally different totally 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 different so once you understand who your woman is then start the romance in the morning the romance starts the moment you wake up you know the moment you wake up and men have an erection yeah that's when you should start you know it's like you want to worship you know when you want to worship god you have to we worship god in different ways sometimes we start with prayers then we enter praise and worship you know i will enter your gates with thanksgiving in my heart so you will enter your woman's gate with love languages in your mouth i will enter your gates with love languages in my mouth you know you have to you people have to have game people have to have game so you understand don't just be carrying standing ovation up and down say eh, I, I, i'm not erect i'm not hard is that supposed to be a testimony are you harassing us with erection no Come, let me tell you something. If you romance us well, we will be looking for you. Women understand good things. So, and women, what? women chase what is sweet. <laughs> women chase what is good. So if you romance us well, we are the ones who will be looking for you. So you need to study your woman like you are studying your Bible. You need to study your woman like you are studying scriptures. I hope that helps you with this few points of ask, all of us. Let's see. A woman can be turned on 
first by making her happy because an angry woman cannot be turned on this and that yeah so please just focus on it and then some wicked people here said that money is their love language i don't know about that one money is therapeutic but money is not everybody's love language yeah so money is good credit alert knows credit alert is therapy really you know so you can just do but don't give her money like you are buying a prostitute oh, because it's a rhyme that we end it all oh, or i'm all caught so you can you know i trust you i trust you um let's see you see somebody said if money keeps marriages rich people will not be having divorce that's the truth so it is money and then some so some women are saying they love gifts the gifts just has to be thoughtful it may be a nice bottle of perfume it depends on your budget it may be a card it may be flowers it may be lunch at work it may be dinner you know so that she doesn't have to cook every time it may be you you know just taking her out for the weekend it may be you actually having a movie date at home you know ordering food in all of those things creating the environment it may be you intentionally creating the house you know taking care of the children so that you take some burden of her you know you write her letters um, um you also spend quality time with her women like quality time a good number of us you know the reason for the quality time is attention and affection we like to communicate we like to talk you know so study your woman and find out which of the love languages if you don't know anything about love languages please just google you know and you will find something there now it is fallacious to say that nigerian women all they want is money let me tell you something nigerian women some of us have our money how much do you people really have nigeria is the poorest country in the world and then when men are saying all oh, nigerian women want is money nigeria is the poorest country in the world so how many men have money there or are we all joking when you people say money are we talking about you people who have cars cars you are living in a rented apartment what else generator is that really the money you people talk about because I'm, I'm surprised. When people are saying Nigerian women like money, how many Nigerian men have money? A good number of them live in rented apartments. They have generator, they have inverter, solar. How many cars do you people have that you people are really saying Nigerian women will have money? And then you people are making it look like all oh, Nigerian women don't have money. Some of us have money that are enough for our generation. Like, what's really going on? <laughs> Leave this small, small money so people are talking about. How many Nigerian men have a million dollars? Any is it in money, 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 money? How many of you have a million dollars? You don't have a million dollars, just move, go and learn. Go and sit in one place. <laughs> People with one million are saying they want their money. People with five million are saying they want their money. The ones who have money don't say anything. It's the ones who are still hustling. All they want is money. How many of you have money? Nigeria is the poorest country in the world. <laughs> ah, is it in money, money, money? Are you the richest country in the world? My friend, stop it. Everybody who has typed to me now, Nigerian women want money. I can vouch you don't have 10 million in your account. What's going on? You don't have 10 million in your account. I, I can see it. <laughs> people who don't have money are the ones who stress other people. People who have money don't talk. You think, have you ever heard of another comma before to say, oh, Nigerian women want his money, or Dan Gote, or Tony Elumedu? It is the ones who are monitoring their bank balance and ensuring that their banks are not stealing money from there that come out to say Nigerian women want money. The poorest country in the world. <laughs> you should go and sit in one place. <laughs> you don't have the money you think you have. <laughs> you don't have the money. Let's hear what, please. Next question, gentlemen. Next question for the women. We're talking about how to satisfy a woman in bed. How to satisfy a woman in bed. That's what we're talking about today. How to own her mind, her body, and her soul. How to satisfy a woman in bed. Don't talk to me about money if you don't have a million dollars. How many Nigerians have a million dollars? Those are the people who should be talking. <laughs> with one million your accounts yeah you know how money you think you have <laughs> just sit there everywhere online and young men want money you that you are still looking for fuel to charge your phone <laughs> you don't hear the truth often 
My friend, go and sit in one place. Question time. Somebody asked a beautiful question earlier on. He said, how can you turn a woman on? And then women responded. And then we said, study your woman because not every woman is the same. And then check out her love language so that you can speak her love language from morning till night. You know, just be kind. Kindness is a fruit of the spirit. Compassion is a fruit of the spirit. Empathy, service, long suffering, patience. You know, all of those beautiful things. Just be human. Just be human. Just be human and just be soft. You know, women are totally different from men. Women are totally, totally different from men. When your woman is on her period, you should be kind, attend to her and tend to her. And then the children, the children belong to you also. So at no point should she feel like, oh, she's an only parent in a marriage. You know, some bad behaviors must expire. Etim F. Young, people should help me vote for my um, groomsman. Etim is one of my groomsmen on my wedding day. And then he must win AMVCA because I don't want him to be on my grooms, you know, man or whatever, and he will be frowning. I don't want him to be frowning behind me. So help me go and vote AMVC. Help me look for Etim F. Young. And he's a beautiful actor, beautiful, talented, beautiful actor. So please go and vote for him. He knows my husband. So if you people are after my love life, help me to support Etim. When Etim wins, I win. <laughs> Do you understand? Go for Etim. Go and vote. People should show me that you voted. When you vote, tag me. Please, just tag me. Idi, I have voted for Etim F. Young because from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of Ireland, take it this by force. Go and vote for Etim F. Young. His family told me and he must win. And then he's not only winning through emotions, he's winning through expertise. He's a good man. So vote for Etim F. Young, AMVCA. When you vote, tag an ancestor. Let me bless you from my soul. Some of us, when we pray for you, it happens. God will increase your greatness. Our prayers are powerful. Do you understand? So, how to satisfy a woman? Etim has a PhD in sexology. So he's also going to comment. PhD in sexology, how to satisfy a woman, how to own her body, spirit, and soul. Some of us are carnal and spiritual because we are very balanced in everything that we do. <laughs> we worship, we pray, we speak in tongues, we obey the word of God. And also in the things, you know, that they call carnal things, we make God proud. <laughs> Glory somewhere. In my first life, I was a comedian, but I had to be serious. So seriousness, I had to be serious for a while, but I'm now back to who I used to be in my first life before I made it. <laughs> Let's talk. Gentlemen, please ask questions. So ask women questions. Women, how do you want to be satisfied in bed? Women, please respond. You will push your come and talk now. Just type it. I will not mention your name. Because some of you are hiding. You want to know the truth. So your woman has been complaining. You don't hit it right. You don't touch me. You touch my breast like you are touching puff puff or agbaluma. Some of you even suck nipple like you are biting things. Ah, ah. Children of God. We may have to create another word for you people. You people who are aggressive in bed. We may have to create another word for you. Because all the spirit of dominatrix were not interested. Somebody said that. A woman wants to be satisfied through caring, love, and helping. So let's talk how to satisfy a woman in bed. Where are all the women? This is supposed to be a question and answer session. I don't want to talk. Oh. Question and answer session and everybody is hiding. Gentlemen, please ask questions. The first question was how to turn a woman on. And we responded. What else would you like to know? I'm making you people laugh. Okay, don't be angry. I'm sorry. Forgive me my trespasses. How to satisfy a woman in bed? I may have to be mentioning names so that people will ask questions. Are you Tunde or Nobolu? I know that you are happily married and you just celebrated your wedding anniversary. How to satisfy a woman in bed? We need to know what you people with PhD in sex are doing. Because we know that it's not every time you people are praying in tongues. Good. Another person said, how to satisfy a woman in bed means that a woman should understand her body and what she likes. Bam. That one came from the spirit. Dear women, you should know what 
makes you fly in the spirit. You know, there's a level you will get to in sex that it will look like you are about to have um, a convulsion. <laughs> have you experienced that before? It will look like you are about to have convulsion. Like your eye will be turning. Like it will be like it's going in and the great part of your eye is coming out. Has it happened to you before? I know that people will deny, but I just say I should ask. Has it happened to anybody before? Thank you. I know that you people will deny. Has it ever happened to you before that a gentleman was sent to you by your angels and he was touching the right spot to the point where your eyes started turning gray, like it was going up and it almost felt like you were about to have a convulsion? Has it ever happened to you before? Because all of you here now, men and women, you are acting like virgins. Some of you have four children. Some of you have three. Some of you are pregnant and you were pregnant last year. Women, has it ever happened to you before? <laughs> the people following me on my wall are not born again at all. So all of you now tell lies. Well, men, let's go back to the question. Let me go back to the question because the women who are following me, I'm going to block all of them after this conversation. Let me go back to the question. Um, What's the question? Okay, no, it was somebody saying that a woman should understand her body. Yes. So when... Okay, somebody said that many have children, but they haven't experienced the height I'm speaking of. They said that you people have not reached the holies of holies. Yeah, some professors are now in the house. Madam BC said that, in fact, this convulsion happens to her when it's raining. You know, this weather for two, weather for two, I don't want to say weather for three before you think that I'm encouraging bad behavior. No, weather for two is two we are dealing with. There's a level of weather that will let you know that God is coming soon. Then, one of the high points of women is after their period. Men, I thought you should know. After periods. Women, please let me know whether it's true or not, too, because I've had conversations with hundreds of women. They said it's the truth for them. I want to know if it's the truth for you also. So my conversation with hundreds of women, they said that the horniest period of their life is after their periods. So it is after that period that they are waiting to be visited. Do you understand? Like they are holies of holies. But you can't approach the holies of holies anyhow. Do you understand? You people should even come from outer court to inner court to the holies of holies. So outer court is when you are doing love languages. You know, when you are trying to act of service, quality, time, um, physical touch. Men, almost every man that I have met in my life, professionally and all of that, they like physical touch. Men, please let me know why. You people's hands don't stay in one place. Kilo Shele. Almost every man says say they like physical touch you tell what coming by physical touch so at the outer court level is the love language level where you are you know giving her love languages if you don't know about love language it is physical touch it is um words of affirmation quality time what's we'll that again um gift and then uh, act of service some other people have more so it's just not limited to five to be fair some other people have more and something like that you know, but outer court starts from there. And then by the time you want to approach, you know, the inner court, you already know that you've passed the test of the outer court. She's ready for you. She's um, in the mood for you. And when I say in the mood for you, please, all this quickie is different from, you know, you know, love making. There's a time for quickie, really. But quickies are good. But there's, you know, there's an agenda. They say, come up higher, please. Come up higher in the lovemaking zone. And then there's the, what's it called, self Inner court. And then there's the holies of holies. Men, please be asking your women, am I doing this? Some, a man said, physical touch seems to be the proof that both of you are on the same page. Okay, that's what a man says, so I agree. <laughs> A man says that physical touch means both of you are on the same page because men like physical touch. I've, I've not met one man who, in my 20 years experience, 
you know, ex professional experience before you people just come up with different things in your mind. Professional experience, men like physical touch, and I usually don't like to be, you know, um, to assume. So somebody says, "We're horniest during ov ovulation about eleven days after period." That one is a natural setup. Okay, so I've met two sets of people. I've met some people who are horny immediately after their period and then another person says um 11 days after so that means so let's put it at a range probably a day after the period to 12 days after the period so let's have that range so you have 12 days really you have 12 days to um you have 12 days to pay attention to and maybe 12 days to prioritize or whatever english you want to do but men and women are talking so somebody says for me it's a mind body and soul thing you need to reach my mind excellent so some people say they are in what's we call sapiosexuals yeah to reach my mind and vibe with my soul to touch my body good so this person is a poet <laughs> sapiosexuals say you got to read my reach my mind meaning intellectually we need to be compatible we need to be able to vibe connect gist you know have some deep conversations you know play share stories but there should be some mental and intellectual connections before you know you try and think that you know both of us are at the level of the body connection so for them make love to my mind first before you make love to my body and it's totally understandable some people call it sapiosexual some people call it different things but it is what it is make love to my mind first before you make love to my body so for gentlemen if you're dating a cerebral and intellectual person please note that one of the things you have to do when chasing them or trying to ask them out is you must pay attention to their mind so for someone like me i can't even hang out with you so if i'm single i can't even hang out with you if i don't vibe with you because normally i don't even go out like that I go to my office or work from my home office. So if I need to spend time with you, it's a lot of work for me. I need to dress up and then I need to do my makeup no matter how little it is. And then I need to drive to where you are. Then I also need to um, take my cards with me, credit cards or whatever cards that I have. You know, even though I know that you'll be picking the bill, it's just polite that I have my card, you know. And uh, yeah, so it takes about two hours preparation getting there and gisting with you or something. If I don't like you enough, I am going to step out of my house for two hours. And then I don't even have the two hours to just give everyone who wants to be with me. So we need to vibe. You know, we need to get to the point where meeting you is going to excite me. Meeting you is going to make me happy. I will enjoy spending time with you before so if i haven't spoken to you on phone if i don't enjoy your vibe on phone i'm going to enjoy your vibe in person so it is what it is with sapiosexuals and cerebral or you know just people who pay a lot of attention to their mental capacity and what it is like that yeah so welcome on board if you're just joining we're talking about how to satisfy a woman in bed and how to own her body mind and so men are talking women are talking we're asking questions men want to know how a woman wants to be satisfied in bed and then women are also talking about how to touch them so we've answered questions about how to turn a woman on we have also said something about understanding your woman because women are different and then i also give the examples of the outer cut the inner cut and the holies of holies a woman must vibe with you before you think of having access to her body now when i say a woman i understand that it's not everybody but a good number of people listening to me today my audience are not you know part of the funny set of people so a good number of people listening to me today one thing is crucial for them and with them which is vibe with my soul first let's check out the connection and the energy before you think that i'm going to strip for you so it is crucial and then men I've also observed that we need it. We, we now live in a highly sexualized world where somebody is talking to you for the first time and they're already talking about sex and then making jokes or sarcasm about sex and all of that. I think it's very untidy. 
if you're a gentleman listening to me and you're single, I think it's very untidy. I think it's disrespectful to you as a person if you have any iota of respect for yourself, which is self-respect, that you haven't met someone in person, you haven't seen the person before, and you're already talking about sex. Your home training should not even allow you to do that. Your exposure should not allow you to do that. Your professional energy should not allow you to do that. There is a way you must even package and communicate to yourself. You haven't seen me before. We have never met. You're talking to me on phone and then you're already giving sexual jokes, sexual sarcasm. You're saying things like, oh, I can't wait to grind you. I can't wait to eat you. It doesn't say anything about you apart from the fact that you're one of the people that we should discard. It is highly disrespectful. And I, I see that we're in a highly sexualized world where any little thing, it's okay to appreciate a lady. It's okay to talk about how beautiful she is. It's okay to say, oh, that what she's wearing looks good on her. But when you start giving sexual innuendos, sarcasm, asking about body counts, what's your business about an adult's body count? What do you need that information for? And do you think that they're going to tell you the truth? Like, what is your business about adult, an adult's body count? And then you are not entitled to sex from a woman. If a woman says she doesn't want sex, go for people who want sex. She doesn't owe you sex in a relationship. She doesn't owe you her body. The fact that you are dating doesn't mean she needs to give you sex. If you want sex every time, go meet a sex worker. Because it is part of the things that I deal with as a professional when people talk to me in coaching and therapy where any little thing is about sex, 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 sex. Like, it is so untidy. How are you having a sexual conversation on the first date? Except she brings it up. There are some ladies who may bring up sexual conversations or maybe have sex with you on the first date. Let her be the one to do all of that. But you can't be talking about, oh, I can't wait to eat you up. I can't wait to grind you. If you are a man of honor, you should try as much as possible to show some honor. Show some respect. Like, respect yourself first. Men say, oh, all men want is respect, all men want is respect. And I say to them, if all you want is respect, the first set of, the first person who should respect you should be you. No matter how beautiful I look to you, you shouldn't say some things to me. Like, are you serious? So if you're chasing any woman, try as much as possible to be clean, tidy, and act like you were erased or you erased yourself. You know, just act like you were raised or act like you raised yourself. But trying to turn a woman into an object, you know, to be slept with and to use and to F, you know, that word. No, some of you just make it just look like mm, you should just be in the bin. So let's dump those behaviors there. So let's talk. Women. How do you want to be satisfied in bed? Men, what question do you want to ask women today? What question do you want to ask a woman today? Um, so somebody says, what of if I don't like sex on the first date and she wants it as a man? Then it's okay to say you don't want to have sex with her on the first date. It's okay to be honorable to yourself. It's okay to say, um, I appreciate this, but I'm sorry. I would not want to, you know, engage in this yet. It's okay for men to say no to sex. Society has made it look like, oh, men are rabbits, you know, they are always ready to, you know, men have value, men have honor. Men can also say no if whoever you are propositioning wants sex and you do not want sex on the first date, it is okay to say no. Say no kindly, say no respectfully, but say no. But then I'm about, I, I'm thinking, what kind of lady would you meet for the first time and is looking for sex? I know that there are ladies like that, you know, but I'm just saying, um, you also just need to be sure that you are with the right person. There are some ladies, I've, I've met some people who had sex on the first date. Do I have an opinion about that? I think people are adults, you know, so it doesn't bother me whether they have sex on the first, second or whatever date. No, it doesn't bother me. It's not what I would ever do, but it doesn't bother me because I'm not in charge of anybody's body. So if you don't want to have sex, please 
respectfully turn it down it is your body as a man you have a right to say no to sex as a man so it is your body it is your values and honor it if you want to if you don't want to honor it do not honor it but don't let society make you feel like oh you were silly somebody wanted to give you free sex ah you gawked yourself all of those things no some ladies will see you as honorable the person may not you know out of maybe rejection but do what gives you the highest level of happiness and respect and joy it is what it is so let's go to the next question how to satisfy a woman in bed women what do you want what do you want men to do more men what questions do you have what do you want men to do more women what questions do you have let's make it real how about those girls that will be complaining that your private part is too big as an excuse for not having it with me should i cut it off i think you should have a conversation number one if she says that she doesn't want to have sex with you it is her right to say no so if she doesn't want to have sex with you go find someone to have sex with they are professional people called sex workers those ones it is their job to have sex with you they get paid in exchange for the experience or what's it called whatever they get paid for yeah so if a lady says she doesn't want to have sex with you because of the size of your organ it is her body it is her right and consent is crucial if not you're going to be termed a rapist and you're going to spend the rest of your life in jail you get it so it is not your right so you can't say oh she's saying this because as an excuse for not having sex with you yes it is her right to say no it is her right to say no if you're married then you should see a marriage therapist who can guide you through that process but no if she's your girlfriend or you're just kicking it then she doesn't want to kick it with you anymore go find somebody else who wants to kick it with you or go get a sex worker so another question what about a real relationship for him though um i'm not sure i understand that i'm not sure i understand that particular question that feels like that question bothers on another one which is what about a real relationship though so if you can write it out i would appreciate that um i don't know i'm not sure i get that question so another said one said but she keeps coming back and forming love then i think you should have a conversation with her if she's coming back and according to you she's forming love then i think you should ask her what she wants you know and then you can also let her know what you want so that both of you can agree she may want something else apart from sex and then you have a right to say um i can honor that or i cannot honor that so while all adults people want sex what's it called situationship or friends with benefits or stuff yeah so she may not want the sex part of it she may want other benefits you may want everything put together running over but a conversation is going to give you what i call clarity session so both of you know if you are in this together or one person has to exit whatever that is so both of you should have a conversation about it it's your body it's her body both of you have a right to be friends or not to be close friends you can be acquaintances yeah but it's not that deep you guys are adults so adults have conversations only children play up and about and make it look funny so next question please next question we're talking about how to satisfy a woman in bed how to own her body own her soul and own her mind and we've had beautiful contributions so questions please questions from ladies what do you want the men to do better questions from men what would you like to know how would you like to please your woman what would you like to learn men need to pay more attention to women outside of the bedroom you know the bedroom and sex looks like what a lot of men are interested in not a bad thing maybe because of their wiring how you know their body works and all of those things good but the next thing we need to talk about is sex should happen outside of the bedroom and i don't mean the penetration and the ejaculation i just mean that we need to spend more time together more time having conversations more time sorting out issues you know as opposed to just having what's it called um makeup sex makeup sex is not bad but sometimes we hide a lot of things you know and then just bang and move on and then the issues come back again 
So we need to spend more time outside the bedroom, having conversations, going for date nights. It may just be watching a movie. You may actually bring the date night into your house. More men need to make love with their words. More men need to make love with their actions. You know, more men need to serve their family members. Leadership is service. You need to serve your family members. Get out of this rot of, oh, a woman does everything in the house. Good and honorable men know that performance in the bedroom is dependent on performance outside of the bedroom. Do you understand? Performance in the bedroom. If you want more access to the holies of holies, you must pass through the outer and the inner core. First of all, you must be able to make love to your partner, their mind and their soul before you get to their body. So you need to have those hot and steamy conversations with your spouse. I also have my sex cards. If you are in Nigeria, you can buy my sex cards. Um, after this video, I'm going to tag the lady you can order from from Nigeria. If you're in the US, you can send me a DM. It's just $50 and shipping is free. So to get the sex cards, sex cards, there are 90, there are 72 cards in them where you can play the game. It's just like a what game where you're picking a card daily and you're following the instructions of the card. So they are crazy, steamy erotic conversations on the cards i created the cards with my team members you know so if you want the card in the u.s send me a dm it's just 50 dollars. shipping to you is free if you want it in nigeria i will tag my team member in nigeria who will deliver the card to you so you have no reason to be dull in bed you can be a professional at work you know showing up in the boardroom and in the bedroom you just did yeah you know the happen so let's go show more appreciation for each other Excellent. I like that. We also need to appreciate each other so much. You know, all of us just survived a pandemic. We just survived the pandemic. We're trying to survive an inflation. Like life is hard. The last thing you want to do is to always insult your partner, curse your partner, make them feel stupid, embarrass them, shame them. You aren't going to get any cookie in the bedroom. If you are always condescending and bringing your partner down, you ain't going to get any cookie. So make love with your words. Someone says, start by Hannah says, men should learn, try to pay attention to their personal hygiene. Ah, you have gone there. Some men wear boxer shorts, not boxer shorts, boxer shorts for three days. Hmm. Please, your personal hygiene, your singlets, your perfume, how you smell is very key. The way some of you smell, <laughs> don't even let me say anything. The way some of you smell, we can't even hug you. The way you smell your personal hygiene, the way you smell your nails, pedicure, manicure, get a set of new underwears, go to see the dentist, bam, smell nice. Do you understand? It's not only a lady who should be put together. Someone said, what about the sex cards in the UK? Mm, you can send me a DM. I think we can ship to the UK, but it may cost you some stipends. Um, I've shipped to Australia before, yeah, so we should be able to ship to the UK. It may cost you some amount of money, but you know, it's workable also. So please send me a DM. I'll tag, this video will be here on my page, sex cards, I'll tag the Nigerian person. Then if you want it in the US or outside of the US, please send me a DM so that we can ship it to you from the US. And yeah, so I like that star by Honor said, we should look clean, feel clean. Let me tell you something. There's a way you would look that would increase your confidence. Have you ever sprayed a bottle of perfume and increased your confidence? Has that ever happened to you? Talk to me somewhere. Like you spread the perfume and you were looking so sexy and hot and you were like, damn, damn. I have a bottle of perfume in my house. It's $400. You know, one of my friends told me to buy it and I did. Anytime I use the perfume, sometimes I actually just use it and sit in my house, like the fluffy auntie that I am. I'm alone in my house, but my house is oozing. My house feels like the temple of the Most High. By myself, the house is saturated by the presence of the perfume. Men come up higher. You can't be acting like mere men. Your boxer is smelling. You're not in SS3. It's not as if there's no water to wash. There's no washing machine. You can't be smelling like hey, somebody who just finished a road trip or somebody who was, you know, who was always coming from the farm. Some of you will be sweating and you still want to go and grind somebody's daughter. They will now open the floodgates of heaven for you. They will lock the kingdom. 
Some of you even need to smell yourself. Wake up one day and put your nose under your armpits before you go and meet your wife or whoever you are doing make way with. Because people are adults. If I say you should not go and have sex now, they say, What's your business? And then you know, concern me now. No, but every is the go, and Jesus is coming soon. Before you go and try to sleep with somebody's daughter, put your nose under your armpits. People cannot be sweating like somebody who just left. Where did they even cut some meat and kill meat? All those butchers. And you are looking for who to grind. They will grind you. People should smell well. Go and do pedicure and manicure. There are some men that you've never gone for a massage before. Let them press you. Let them press away anger. Let them press away all those easily besetting sins. Let them press your ear, press your head. Let them press you, people. Wait, man. Is it that people react to fluffy life or pampering or good things in life? Smell yourself. Put your nose under your armpit. Smell your boxer shorts. Smell your singlets. <laughs> man. People should make me proud. Uh -uh. We are laboring for you. Yes, I can't step out without using a perfume. Smell it. Smell is very important. Oh. Ah. You know, there are some smells. And then um, I don't, we don't mean break the bottle we do not say finish the perfume no there are some smells that you just press small <laughs> when you say oh good afternoon the way they will look at you it's like, ah, ah, who is this you know six hundred dollar perfume a thousand dollars don't worry don't start calculating ah that's a whole 800k it's not a whole 800k at a level do you understand it's not a whole at a particular level so don't let us stress ourselves once you enter like this, you will enter like lightning. Everywhere will just you will just take over. No, everybody odor at the mention of that perfume, everybody odor will bow. Men, come up higher. You know, there's a way you will smell that it will be inviting. Even your wife will be looking for you. They will be looking for you. They will be looking for you. Do you understand? Eh, uh -huh. you see. Professor Fenimi said that men need to be washing their balls. Those two sacks, you need to wash them. Because you people are even very funny. A good number of men say, oh, they like hand job and blow job. Who wants to give you blow job if that place is dirty? And then some of you need to be shaving. We don't want hair there. Okay, you want us to be giving you blow job and then there's hair in the middle of our teeth. <laughs> you won't make heaven. <laughs> oh, no. There is nothing you can do with it. You won't make heaven. So you want people's children to give you blowjob and there is hair there. So you want to tell me now that you are doing beard gang gear. You are also doing beard gang downwards. And you are looking for blowjob. Looking to and fro for blowjob. You ain't going to get jack. No blowjob for you. No hand job for you. Only naughty corner. That's the reason why they are not coming close. Be smelling like sports jollof rice today. It's your day of repentance. I've come into your life. Give your life to Christ. Go on, enter the bathroom and have your bath. Don't manage water. Scrub as you are scrubbing. Be saying thank you, ED. Scrub body wash. Some of you, the only soap you use is Irish Spring. Go on, use your wife's soap. Ask you, you people should even be stealing your wife's things. You know, do your, what's it called, your facials, all those things. Married men are really enjoying. Especially those married men with very fluffy wives. They will do facials, they will put masks. Enjoy, singles. I have a beauty consultant, you should be asking, what soap should I be using? I want to be smelling, smelling well, smelling rich within your budget. You don't have to break the bank to smell rich. Go and wash your balls as I'm talking. Some of you will pee. You will not use wipe. You will pee. You will now, you will shake it and put it back in your trouser. And then you will wear that boxer shorts for three days. In three days, you are still looking for blue job. Give yourself a knock. Go and wash your balls. Go wash your balls. Slaughterhouse. Thank you, Jerry. You're not saying that some people smell like they're coming from slaughterhouse. Somebody said, I can't even allow anybody to come close to me if I haven't cleaned up. That's how you people will be saying, you go and clean up. Oh. Don't even disturb anybody's child. If you are smelling like slaughterhouse, some of you will come from traffic. 
you will not have your bath. Lagos traffic, oh, Nigeria's traffic, you will not have your bath. You will be sweating. Water is dripping like this. I am still looking for quickie. Quickie flog you there. Please, question and answer. Eh, hey, hey, how about you? Shower. You know, at night, when you want to enter the holies of holies, you know that the priest used to put fragrance. When you shower at night, just put small body spray. You know, let your wife even say, ah, do you have a meeting in your dream? Babes, are you going out in your dream? No, no, I just prepared myself for you. Just, you know, come on, baby, let's hug. You know, just let them even play with you small. And it's not as if when they are hugging you, you already have stood though. You know, people are very funny. More small like this. People are already looking for holies of holies. Calm down. Calm down, young people. Calm down. You see, ladies are confessing here. Smelling nice turns me on. For men who are looking for how to turn their women on. Smell nice. Wash your damn balls. When you are washing your feet, wash in between the toes. Let your toes... Some of you, the way people have never done pedicure, go for pedicure this weekend. Go and put your leg. Let them romance your leg. Go for pedicure. Let them scrub all your easily besetting sins. Everywhere you have ever walked to in life, let them scrub it away. Take it off your fingers. You know, take it off it. Take it off your fingers. Shave. God will help you. Delicious NG. Thank you. Shave. You can't be doing beard gang here and be doing beard gang down. Do you want to fix weave on there? Do you want to fix weave on there? Women, I hope you're also hearing your part. You are not fixing weave on. Take it easy. You can't be smelling down there. Ah, ah. No. Invest in perfumes. Invest in perfumes, children of God. Some people will even go to church and there's body odor. How can you have body odor in the presence of God? Some of you will not go to heaven, no. You can't have body odor in the presence of God. You raise your armpit and it's smelling. Ah, ah. No. No, baby, no. Somebody says, I wash my balls four times a day. This one is now looking like something is wrong with you. <laughs> Somebody says, uh -huh. Somebody says, it's the way she says it for me, casually and he enters. It's true. Men, you people should be tall, dark and handsome and be smelling well. Let somebody be happy to hug you. You know, um, be smelling your armpits daily. If your armpit is smelling, go under the tap, pour water and clean it and put your deodorant. When you are done in the toilet, wipe your... whatever you will call it. Wipe your D. Wipe it. Don't just shake it like this. Shake it, shake it, shake it and put it back. No! You are not a farmer. I'm not a hunter. I'm not in the bush. Wipe the damn thing. Wipe it and put it back. Clean your balls. Wash it. You see? Somebody said that some men want blowjob, but it looks like you are biting meat, protein, shaki. You know, you have hair there. And you are looking for blowjob. So we should not be using toothpick or floss to remove the hair from your DRB. It ain't gonna happen. So you think that I went to everyday school to be fighting with the hair on your D. No. No. If you want to see the holies of holies, you gotta come with fragrance. You gotta come so that we can devour you. But before we devour you, you gotta approach the throne of grace appropriately. If not, you know, in the olden days, Anytime the priest made a mistake like this, the priest won't come out. The priest will die there. Hope you used to read your Bible. Yes. Before the priest will go into the holy of holies, they prepare themselves. And any mistake like this, oh, you just be hearing, it is well, it is well, meaning they have died. So, before you approach a woman, smell well, put your swag on. Don't let poverty be smelling around you, be looking around you. No matter your budget, there's a perfume for your budget. And then don't go and buy perfume that will be smelling like fuelo. <laughs> you know, there's some perfumes that may catch fire if you use it. If a smoker comes near you, you will just blow. <laughs> don't go and buy it. Oh. Don't go and buy it. Don't come and tell me that eh, it is my budget. Don't go and buy any perfume that smells like fuel, gas, or diesel. 
Because you can see how I'm laboring for you now because I want you people to have more sex. It's the married people I'm talking to. All sinners, it's not my business what you people are doing. It is married people I am talking to. Good. They say people at the back can hear me. Thank you. People are screaming. Yes. They said that you should not spray cologne on your balls. Good. Very important point. Don't spray cologne on your balls. It's going to give you time. Yes. They said that if you spray cologne on your balls, you are gotten. It's finished. So, wash your balls. You know, I did not say you should go and spray cologne there. Normally, when you spray perfumes, it is behind the ear. Year one, year two, you spray your perfume and then you put your perfume here and you put it here. Do you understand? So you are putting perfumes, you know, behind your neck. You are putting on your, um, what's it called? I don't know what this is called. I can't remember it. But you put your perfume here. You just spray it here. You spray it there. And then, you know, you just rub, you know, and stuff. Perfumes are not to be on clothes. Sometimes they mess up the clothes, not on jewelry. So you put behind your ears and then you put just here and then here and then you rub it together and you're good if it's a good perfume you're already good for the day you know so and every time you use the bathroom and you see that power has changed hands in your smell you just wipe and clean off with maybe water and some short towel men should have handkerchief by now do you understand all those white handkerchiefs use it for yourself yeah don't spray colognes on your private parts they said you will not like it The wicked, um, sorry, somebody said, I advise, Kafi is here. Kafi is the professor of dance and sexology. Kafi teaches how to use dance to heal. Heal your mental health, heal your sexual life, anything. <laughs> Kafi is here for you. Advise every man to date clean women. We are talking about men. Women have to be clean. Any woman that is not clean. You know women can't even get away with it. Women, you know there's no way you cannot be clean. You know that one. You know you can't get away with it. You will just be smelling. There's no way. So yeah, women gotta be clean. And then allow your woman shop for you. And then women also allow your man shop for you. Men know how to buy lingerie. You know all those sexy stuff. They want to see in the bedroom. When I say men should shop for you, men are not going to say you should go and buy a cuff. All those things that look like you want to kiss somebody's daughter in the room. All those, you know. All those things that look like you want to kiss somebody's daughter. And cough, weep, all those things. If you go and buy it and your woman is not like that. Whoa, it's divorce. You will smell. You will now tell her what inspired you. What inspired you to put her in prison in your house? <laughs> ah, I am something else. Uh, yeah, so somebody said, I prepare a table before my sweetheart. This Madame BC is just encouraging me. Like she's, she's giving it to me. Like she's entering me. She's all bringing the revelation all the way from the United Kingdom. How to satisfy a woman in bed. Own her body, own her soul. You know, own her mind. Mrs. BC in the house. She and other people are going to order for sex cards. If you need sex cards, I'm in the U.S., we can ship it to you anywhere you are in the world. In, in Nigeria, I will tag the person you will collect it from. You will make me proud in your bedroom. Everyone is the goal, but on earth, you are going to have orgasm. The kind of orgasm that you will say thank you to your spouse during sex and after sex. The kind of orgasm that when you are having, your eye will be turning backwards. It will look like you are about to have an, um, a conversion. You know, you have to have a PhD in carnal things and in spiritual things. There must be a balance because you must make God proud. So, let's see. They need to differentiate between intimacy and lovemaking. Intimacy is what happens in the outer court. Outer court. Lovemaking happens in the inner court and holies of holies. If you need more, you have to buy the tape. Pakuta Intimacy, outer court. Outer court, love making, inner court, and holies of holies. Inner court and holies of holies. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. You people have to make God proud. God will be looking at you, especially married people, that God gave you people sex. And you are now doing missionary every day of your life. You are doing missionary sex. Are you serious? Are you serious? It's not me that will tell you what to do because that's when you people will see me finish. You ain't gonna see me finish. Dr. Alabi in the house. All you people do daily. Missionary sex. Car label sata. Are you serious right now? No way. 
you are going to buy the sex cards. It has 72 different options, sexual options that I and the team members God has given us are for signs and wonders. Signs and wonders must happen in the bedroom. You know how you will finish having sex and you will just sleep. Well done, good and faithful servant. I need to leave this online life. I don't like how you people are, are seeing me finish. I'm reading the comments so that I can respond. Somebody says, I'm very short. It's them, it's not me that, um, that, that, that they say I'm short. It's them that is short. I'm very short, so I am usually right in the man's armpit. And if he smells bad, you see, they say once they perceive you, OT law, meaning no hugs. I'm not going to get close. Hygiene is huge for both of us. Clean couple, happy couple, romantic couple. Do you understand? That's it. That's it. Don't go and buy highly inflammable perfume or coma log bano. Don't buy a cheap perfume that will make you burn. <laughs> Take it easy. Yo. Take it easy. Take it easy. Ah. They said they put body spray on tie. Me, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Can no. can no. I don't know about that one. No. I don't know about they putting they are putting body spray on tight so I don't know. He say I'm saying people should not use um what's it called whip in the bedroom. <laughs> me I don't know about whipping in the bedroom but if somebody's son tries to whip me in the bedroom he will land in prison. <laughs> he will be jailed. That is domestic violence. <laughs> Do I look like somebody who likes to be flogged? Me, that if I go and collect injection, I cry. I cry at the hospital when I go and collect injection. Me, pin must not pierce me. In fact, let me take it to Nigeria. Pin must not choke me. I cry. I don't like any form of, you don't want to whip me. <laughs> My dear, honey, you will be in jail. That idea, whether it's from porn or from your friends, you will tell me who inspired that habit in you. You want to flog me. <laughs> they didn't flog me in nursery school. They didn't flog me in primary school. They didn't flog me in college or high school. They didn't flog me during MSC or Ed. It's you. <laughs> well, go and flog whoever wants to be flogged. Though. Leave some other women out of it. Just leave us alone. So, what's it called? Hmm... Somebody says, how did I enter this life? Now I can't leave. The illustration plus tongues. That's what happens. So you are in the holies of holies. That's how men just fall in love. Power must change us in the bedroom. All these ones are people are going to church, always looking in tongues. Da, 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 da. But your bedroom, you are not representing God. Your bedroom is F9. Your bedroom is F9. Somebody said, don't put uh, body spray on your thigh. It will mess up. It may mess up pH balance. Okay. One boy here that is not born again is telling me that um, whipping is called kinky whipping. Go and whip your wife. Leave other people who are normal on this life alone. Go and whip whoever you want to whip. Military man, go and whip them. If you find a woman who knows how to whip more than you whip, they will kill you through whipping. In fact, they will now choke. Uh, well, let me tell you something. I've met people that try to choke people before that they converse. They rush them to the hospital. All the people who are doing choking during sex. Choke me, baby. Call me daddy. Choke me. Daddy, choke me. Daddy. Some of you will die during choking you. <laughs> Whoa. I have met two people that got, they choked them till they took them to the hospital. One was asthmatic. The boy did not know. And she was saying, choke me, choke me, choke me. The boy was choking, choking, choking. At a point, asthma came. The boy didn't know he was God. That didn't allow that girl die. If you want to choke you, your, yourself, choke yourself so, but know who you are choking. Know their medical history before you land in jail. Somebody says subtle bites go a long way. You are the same person who spoke about weeping. Now you have come with subtle bites. I think that you don't belong to this life. This 50 shades of blade you are bringing here. We don't do it on this wall. <laughs> Go to where they do 50 shades of grey. Leave normal people alone, please. Mm. So, let's see. 
bedroom tactics cannot be f9 and you are telling me that eh, i'm a network professional you are not a sexual network professional when it comes to sex there's no wi-fi no connection you suck breasts like puff puff or pure water you even bite nipple what's the difference between you and a rottweiler listen to this live i came with fire for you today don't choke them to come and oh, if they have asthma what is luck they will die you will now explain to the judge what you were doing with somebody's daughter to the point where they died during sex with these few points of mine i hope i've been able to convince you that more people want to have sex but we need to have it with the right set of people we need to have it with people who understand our body and we need to have orgasm it's not only you that should be ejaculating go and find everything about a woman's clitoris and g-spot and everything necessary to make her proud do you understand some of you read biology you read further maths you read accounting you can't read about clitoris you can't read about g-spots go and ask your woman go and ask her submit yourself under the hand of the almighty Chungbo, professor Fei. Faye says love making is the best. Doctor, Doctor Faye says love making is the best. She doesn't want you to whip her. She doesn't want you to choke her. She just wants to make love. And love making is different from sex. So I'll see you people next week. Today's Naked and Afraid show came with fire and brimstone. Because we need to take care of, you know, cleanliness is next to godliness. You can't be godly and have body odor. Go and have your bath. Scrub well. Scrub well. God.